What's up, everybody? I'm Mikey Dredd, and it's build day here in the Bowling Science Lab. Today, we are going to build the new 4K video editing machine that the channel so desperately needs. So let's get into that. Before that, let's talk about our sponsor, www.bowling.science. Today, I'm wearing my Mikey Dread shirt. I know it's a little weird. Mikey Dread, Mikey Dread, right? Spit an image. But you can get your own Mikey Dread shirt over at www.bowling.science. We have shirts and jerseys there from Cool Wick. Make sure you check out all the cool stuff and support the channel. Get yourself some nice new threads on the way. Let's go ahead and get back to the action. Thanks for stopping by today. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also hit that like button if you like the content. Okay, I'm just gonna go through the parts that we've selected for our build today and talk a little bit about it before we start our build. Let's start with the CPU. At the heart of this system is a Ryzen 5000 series, Ryzen 7. This is the 5800X, and this is a brand new chip with Zen 3 architecture from AMD. For that Ryzen 7 5000 series, we need a motherboard. I went with the ROG Strix B550F motherboard. This motherboard has BIOS flashback feature. So without a CPU in it, I can actually update this motherboard to match the new processors that had just come out. If this thing's got Wi-Fi, it's got RGB. Most importantly, it's got lots of extra power, lots of PCIe 4. This thing here cranks, it's built for overclocking, solid VRMs, lots of cooling. You can do a lot with it. And so that's the gonna be the motherboard, the base of our system. To go with that, of course, we're talking gaming and we're talking video editing. So let's go with the graphics card. Now, graphics cards are hard to come by right now. And anything NVIDIA is completely overpriced. Everything's like twice as much as its value right now, just because there's such a shortage. The NVIDIA 3000 series, awesome can't find them, was kind of out of our budget. So AMD's got new graphics cards that just released over the last month. And we will, in the future, be hoping to upgrade to one of those 6,000 series GPUs. But I was able to get my hands on a 5600, a 5600 XT. This is a thick boy from XFX, the thick two. This thing is sweet, overclocks. You can get it to run close to a 5700 XT as far as speeds. And this is a great budget graphics card that'll get us started and definitely be an upgrade from the MacBook Pro we were using with Radeon 560 graphics. All right, we're gonna have to keep all that cool. To keep that CPU cool, we're gonna get fancy. We've got liquid cooling today. We have a water-cooled, this is a Corsair H100i RGB Platinum SE. It's got addressable RGB fans and they're gonna look really sweet. It's got the water block with RGB as well. All white, which will match the case as we'll show you here in a minute. I haven't even taken the case out of the box yet, but the case is Arctic white to match, all from Corsair. This thing is sweet. It's a 240 millimeter radiator. It should keep me cool for stock operation. I don't know how much overclocking I'll be able to do with a 240 radiator, but I can always upgrade cooling in the future if I decide that we need more thermal control or if we wanna overclock this processor a little bit more. But this thing is gonna be awesome. I'm really excited about going water-cooled for the first time. We need our memory as well. RAM, I went with Vengeance Corsair LPX. 3600 megahertz RAM. So this is really fast RAM. I believe the B550 boards run stock at 3200, so I can overclock it to 36. I might be mistaken, they might run stock at 36. But this is 32 gigabytes, it's a two by 16 kit. My motherboard has four slots in it, so I can always add two more RAM chips of the exact same type and upgrade in the future and go to 64 gigs without having to spend too much and just buy another kit. Or if I wanted to, I could always replace the whole thing or do something else, but this is a lot of fast RAM. It's twice as much as I would need for any gaming and definitely enough to get me started with 4K video editing. And it's more RAM and faster RAM than I've ever had. So I'm really excited to crack that in there. We got ourselves an NVMe boot drive as well. There's a 500 gigabyte SSD. There's a 970 Evo Plus from Samsung super fast I'm gonna add more storage we're gonna add uh, we have another m.2 slot on the motherboard so we will be adding more SSD storage and some hard drives to this machine for storage purposes because 4k videos are huge they take up space and you need 
somewhere to put all that stuff. I do have an external four terabyte hard drive that I picked up before the build to help back up the old computer and to give me extended storage space for files uh, when I'm done working with them. But I do want to get another SSD. This whole system is built to be upgradable, but also to kick ass as it is. So let's go ahead and start cracking into it. We've got a few safety things to take care of first before the build. I've got my anti-static wrist strap that will protect the motherboard from getting shorted out. We'll go ahead and get the power supply out. We'll clip this up to it and let's get started with the build. Can't forget our power supply. We definitely have to provide power to all these components. So I went with a Corsair 750 watt semi-modular power supply. We're in kind of a smaller case. So fully modular, semi-modular is what I wanted, but the quality is what mattered. This is 80 plus bronze and I wanted at least a bronze certified power supply to make sure that we have good uninterrupted power. 750 watts is way more than enough power for what we are doing with this build currently, but it gives me headroom to slap a bigger video card in there, upgrade cooling, push some overclocking without having to worry about how much power we're delivering. So we've got the Corsair power supply to go with it. There's a little theme here. I don't need to match everything, but going with the Corsair power supply, Corsair RAM, Corsair cooler, and Corsair case I felt was a good idea here, and then add some other high quality components around it. I've got a keyboard as well, mechanical keyboard for this build. I'm gonna get the mouse that matches. That'll be coming in. It's not in yet, should be here next week. This is the Kumara. I believe this is the 522, but it is a mechanical keyboard. I'll have to check that. It's got, it's a 60% 10 keyless. It's got an aluminum back plate. It's got Otemu blue switches. These things are nice. Uh, double injected molding, so the, the colors will never wear away. It's got all sorts of RGB. But these are from Red Dragon. They're only like 40 bucks. Um, this is probably the best mechanical keyboard deal you can get are these Red Dragon keyboards. You can get them on Amazon and uh, they're freaking awesome. So I can't wait. That's all the parts. I don't think I forget it. Bleh. I don't think I forget it anything. I don't think I forgot anything this time. So now that we've got everything, let's get to the build. All right, I'm gonna be straight with y'all. Sometimes I forget things. <laughs> if you've known me for any amount of time, you know that to be true. And we forgot the most, well, not the most important part, but the biggest, heaviest part, I forgot what we're gonna stick all this in. This is our Corsair 275 Airflow Arctic White case. It'll be the first thing that we get cracked into so that we can take a look at it. I'm really excited, haven't seen it. Let's actually go ahead and open that up. Woo! I've been so excited to see what this looks like. I need a knife. Got my knife. Let's go ahead and see what she looks like. This case came included with a couple fans. This was a good value case. It's just got a lot of airflow and came with three fans and didn't cost a lot of money. I don't know how to get into this. This would be fun. How do you do this? Ah! Okay, here we go. I've got it. Kendra, grab, pull. All right, I got, I got a hand here. Oh, beautiful. Tempered glass side panel, mesh, breathable front. It's got some decent USB connectivity on the front. Oh, nice. All right, let's inspect the case. All right, so this is the side panel of our 275 Airflow tempered glass. It's got thumb screws. Wow, looks nice. It's got some nice grommets inside for cable management. The front panel here is graded and it does come off. I've read that it can be a little tight the first time. Yep, there it goes. So the front panel comes completely off. I might paint this or customize it somehow. Leave in a comment what do you think I should do with it. Come up with a good idea. It's got mesh, magnetic 
removable filters, which allow plenty of airflow. Comes with these two stock fans in the front, which actually we're gonna be moving. Um, I wanna be able to cool my parts and uh, you need air to do that. A lot of cases I look at and uh, like our friend uh, Steve over at Gamers Nexus, I'm a big fan of his channel. Like he said when he was doing Linus's build challenge, where does the air come from? I didn't want to be in that problem. So we know where the air comes from and it comes through this awesome front grate. It's got a removable magnetic mesh on the top as well. And plenty of room to mount fans up there. You can actually go with a full 360 millimeter radiator up top. It might even fit bigger than that. So that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and take our tempered glass side panel off. And we're gonna put that in the case box so that we don't destroy it while we're building. Don't shat there. Oh cool, there's also a filter down here on the bottom underneath the power supply intake. So you've got more mesh filters. That comes right off. It's out of the way. Let's go ahead and get this guy put to the side. Before we install anything in the case, we gotta get some components mounted to the motherboard. I was gonna update the BIOS immediately, but I'm gonna update the BIOS after I build the computer because I saw someone else do that. First thing we gotta do is get Static safe. We're gonna unbox the power supply. Important! Well, we don't need that. All right, it comes with zip ties. Those are sweet, but we also have our own zip ties. There's screws here. We're gonna probably need those. We'll put that in a safe place. Power cord, nice big long one. We like big long power cords. That. All of our cables, these are the modular cables. This is a semi-modular power supply. That means that not all the power cables are already attached to power supply. Some of them can be attached, so that saves us some room. And here is our much bigger than I thought it was going to be power supply. <laughs> Plugged in, we are powered off. I'm gonna do what Linus suggested and use it as an ankle strap and not a wrist strap. That way my arms are free to move. So the purpose of this is to not short out any components on the motherboard with static electricity as we build. We clip one side here to the metal yeah, we'll clip it there. I'm gonna set this on the ground and then strap my ankle to it. And we should be nice and grounded. Let's get our motherboard out. Now, I don't have like a static free workstation. So if you don't have one, you can use your motherboard box as a static free build station kind of test bench. So this is in a static free bag right now. Once we take it out of there, we're not gonna wanna touch any of the metal components on the bottom. Wanna use just like the back plate or the big chunky components on the front. It comes with all of our guides, a CD. Who's, what are CDs for? No one needs those. All right, and then uh, a manual, which we probably will need. So we'll keep that handy. Looks like we got some sweet stickers. Some cords, cords and cables. We're gonna need those. Ooh, M.2 screws, all sorts of good stuff. These will stay in this box. All right, oh, I need to use the box. That's right, whoopsie. Okay, I like the stickers. Stickers will be involved. I'm so nervous. So nervous. Oh yeah. Oh, oh. I don't know why my heart's racing, everybody. Because this is the part that can mess up really bad. All right, let's uh, 
Let's go ahead and unbox this Ryzen 7 5800X. Okay, so it's mostly filler, mostly air, of course, because processors are small and doesn't need to come with much. Okay, so here it is, our Ryzen 7 5800X. Please focus on me. I would like to be the focus. There it is. No. Ryzen 7 5800X. Oh, look at the back. There's all the pins. On a Ryzen processor, the pins are on the processor. That's why this is so important. You don't want to bend any of those thousands of pins. There's a triangle in the corner, and I line that up with the triangle there. And it's supposed to be zero pressure installation. So there's a lever that we pull back. Oh my. I'm like so afraid to hold it. It's gorgeous. This is the silicon that powers our machine. Let's get a look at this guy. There it is. It's all gold, copper, gold plated copper. I don't know. It's shiny, it's beautiful, it's fast. We haven't talked much about this, but this processor is eight cores, 16 threads, PCIe Gen 4, and stock, it boosts up to 4.7 gigahertz at a 3.8 gigahertz base. It's really fast per core, per thread, and I'm gonna stop being distracted so that I don't destroy my processor. These pins are very, very, very fragile. Okay, there's the triangle, there's the triangle. I line it up. And you just drop it in. Woo! We did it! First try. First try! Oh, it makes a little sound. It's in! Alright, I don't have to touch the processor anymore. Next step. Install the RAM! Yay! I think that's what time it is. I think we should install the board components from closer. All right, Vengeance LPX RAM, we talked a little bit about it, 3600 megahertz. It's fast. How do we open it? That's the real question. Aha, like most things, with a knife. All right, there's our box. Here's our two sticks. We got the red RAM. I didn't go RGB with the RAM. I wanted to do something different. Red aluminum heat spreaders. We're gonna go ahead and lock these in. They only go in one way. Oh, these are beautiful. And we're going to populate the second and fourth slots because we're only putting two. So let's line up the slot. Yeah. Okay. All right, it clicked. You want to feel a nice firm seating and clicking on both sides? That was sweet. All right, let's try it again. See if we can go two for two. Those look nice! Both are seated firmly. Next step, install NVMe SSD. Wow, that's not a screwdriver. That's a screwdriver. We're going to have to take this plate off right here. This motherboard features an M.2 heat sink here, and that's what this Mac, there are two M.2 heat sinks. The closer one is the PCIe Gen 4. And that's the one we want. That's the fast one. NVMe SSD. Samsung 970 Evo Plus, 500 gigs. It's not a ton, but it'll get us started. We're gonna put another SSD in here, probably another one of these, and then tie it to some big old NAS hard drives. Put some big old nails, the boys, in there. There we go. If I get through this without slicing my finger off, we're gonna do good today. Limited five-year warranty. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's so pretty. All right. So it just slots in. You just push it in. 
and then push it down. And then you gotta screw it in. There we go. One SSD installed. Now this is a blank SSD, so we're gonna have to install Windows on it. Okie dokie. Boom. Corsair H100 IRGB. Let's open this guy up. Manual, which we will need. Warranty guide, which will go back in the box. It's got fans. Comes with two. I'm assuming I'm going to have to mount those. Yep. We have two Corsair whatever they are. I'll put it on the screen. I think they're LL120s. They're really sweet though. We've got our radiator for the water cooling and we have our block. The block is what attaches to the CPU and keeps it all cool. We have mounting brackets, which we're gonna need Lots of screws, which we're probably gonna need. This looks like USB power for the head. And that's everything in the box. We're gonna mount the fans pulling the air through the radiator. So we don't have to worry about the fans yet. The fans can just go to the side, live their happy little life. All right, now, this is an all-in-one water cooling solution. So yes, there's liquid running through my computer. Not yet, but there will be. Okay, this sits one way. I'm gonna try to figure out how this is oriented in the case. This is gonna sit like this. And I really want this to be like this down but it might have to do something weird to do it that's okay we can make it happen all right that goes there i think okay. hmm what's a good way to do this okay we'll just set you there for now put these cords out of the way all right that's how you're gonna go Get to the manual. We're gonna pause it. That Ryzen chip looks so good. Okie dokie. Look, if I can pull this off, everybody, y'all can too. Building a PC, so easy a caveman can do it, right? Okay, I have installed the correct apparati. We're gonna try to get even mounting pressure that's the word of the day kids even mounting pressure okay so the plastic's got to come off that would be a really bad mistake Tightening down both at the same time to try to get some sort of even mounting pressure. I think we did okay. It doesn't look too messy. It got a little stuff. I don't see any thermal paste anywhere. Like it's not supposed to be. Tighten thumb screws until secure. Okay, they're secure. I'm assuming. I think we're good. Route the fans. Okay, so now it's time to do some fan work.
So we're back. We got the radiator installed and we had to move some fans around. We put the black fans that came in the case all ended up going two exhaust up here and one exhaust in the back. So we have three exhaust fans. I'll show you the ones in the top of the case. Once we get the motherboard installed, I've got the radiator mounted here at the top. It's a 240 radiator. I was going to put a 120 fan under it because I figured 240 and 120 is 360, right? This thing supports a 360 radiator. What it doesn't support is a 240 radiator plus a 120 fan. So I wanted to have another intake fan down here, but we'll just let that be open breathing air um, that'll naturally draw through the case. Um, now let's go ahead and get this motherboard mounted. That is the next step. All right, so let's talk about where we are. We're gonna route the pump header cables for the water cooler pump, and then all the fan mounts are routed, and we should be ready to hook up that power supply, get the GPU installed, flash the BIOS, and we'll have a computer. Oh no. All right, that looks good. That's tucked out of the way. All right, next steps. Let's get this power supply in here. And let's see what that looks like. So the power supply, let's turn this whole case around. All right, well, after moving around fans for an hour and figuring out how to make everything reach, we got all the cables, all the connectors reaching. Everything that is currently installed in this case is attached to the motherboard. So we are now going to add the final piece. The thick boy. I got this for a decent deal considering that all graphics cards are selling for like twice what they're worth. I got this for retail. It's a Radeon 5600 XT by XFX. It's the thick. After hours of building, we've got it put together. Um, we've got to now do a BIOS update because this board was made before this graphics, uh, before the CPU came out. So it is supported, but we have to update it. I don't have a compatible CPU, so we're gonna use the BIOS flashback feature. I haven't tried this yet and I've never done it. It's supposed to be really easy, so we're gonna see how this goes. There is a USB port labeled BIOS. We're gonna stick that in there. We're gonna flip the switch on and we're gonna press and hold this BIOS flashback button. And now the light's blinking. It's a little light. You can't see it, but it's right there blinking. And now we just wait two minutes. And we hope. And, and, and we hope. <laughs> so, the light went out and I'm gonna pull this right on out with it. So now this motherboard should be updated. We have light. This is amazing. All right, I need to now hook it into a monitor and see if we can get it to post. If we can get it to post, then we begin the process of installing windows. 
All right, we're gonna leave the case open. Let's get a monitor over here and let's see what we can't do. Let me grab that monitor. All right, everybody, it's the moment of truth. My heart is like absolutely pumping. All right. All I'm supposed to do is push the power button. Things lit up. All the case fans are spinning. Oh crap. I have a fan mounted backwards. <laughs> That's okay, I can fix that. I have one red light, it's white now. It's green. Okay. Come on, show me a post. It posted! It freaking posted first try! 32,000 megabytes of RAM, USB devices total. One Ryzen 7 5800X, eight core processor, new CPU installed. Press enter setup to configure your system. No CPU detected. No keyboard detected. No keyboard detected, sorry. There's a CPU detected. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I'm very excited. It's quiet? Feels like the pump's running. There's not a lot of gurgle sound. We freaking got it! NVMe drive? Okay, so now we're gonna turn it off, y'all. Exciting. And I'm gonna grab a Windows install Er, Windows installer, and uh, we're gonna be right back to install Windows and get this thing cranked. All right, here we are um, on the internet. Gonna go install the graphic drivers and get everything up to date in here. Um, it installed Windows in like three and a half minutes. That was super fast. And then it rebooted once, took like five minutes to get prepared and now we are here. Uh, it's updating everything and I've got the internet plugged in via ethernet. I'm plugged into my 144 Hertz monitor. We're gonna get the graphic settings cranked up and then uh, download something and give it a test. PC's all built. I've got my Timo and Mikey wallpaper that our buddy Timo Toyvenin hooked up for us. And uh, we've got it all put together. I'm just gonna peel some of the plastic off of all the components and put the glass on, peel the glass off, uh, peel the plastic off of our tempered glass side panel. And we'll call it a wrap. As we get into it over the next few days, I'm going to run some benchmarks and compile some things and get some numbers together and then we're gonna try to turn this baby up get a little overclocking action going on but first we get our benchmark numbers so stay tuned for that thank you all for watching make sure you subscribe here on bowen science and over on mikey dread gaming that's our secondary channel it's not just gaming but it's uh, a lot of live streaming a lot of conversational stuff and you'll see the full build guide uh there on mikey dread gaming so wherever you're seeing this, make sure you're subscribed both places. <laughs> I guess that's the long and short of it. Thank you guys for taking along for the ride. Today's build was sponsored by Bowling.Science, www.bowling.science. Grab your shirt today. I'm wearing the Mikey Dread t-shirt. Cool Wick does a great job with those. So make sure you grab one of those if you were looking. We'll catch you next time here. And as always, peace, love, Bowling Science.